Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may happen to be joining us from. It's another fantastic Thursday, and we are here presenting our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinars. My name is Zach. I'm here with Dave, and uh, in the Q&A with us is going to be Bryce running the show for us in the questions and answers section. Today we're going to be presenting all about the Design Center in AutoCAD and in AutoCAD LT. We'll, we'll run through it. It's the same in both programs. So uh, most of the AutoCAD IQ webinars we present, we're going to be presenting in uh, at least the Back to Basics anyway. I should clarify. The Back to Basics track is uh, going to be done in AutoCAD LT. Um, if there's ever a feature, of course, that we cover that's only available in one or the other, we'll, we'll try to, our best to point that out so there's no confusion there. But uh, let's get into this a little bit further. This is us. Uh, Bryce and I are in the Lake Oswego, Oregon office, and Dave is in Manchester. Uh, as always, there's a chat window. The questions, if there's anything that comes up that uh, you need us to go over again during the presentation, don't hesitate. Uh, if you have questions that pop up, put them in there. Bryce will do his best to answer them. Uh, if we have time at the end, we'll do some, some live on-air Q&A. Everything gets recorded, as always, and you can always uh, check these out on our YouTube channel at any time if you can't attend the webinars live with us. So just to go through our, our upcoming calendar here, uh, we always have these on Thursdays. So next Thursday being Thanksgiving, you get the week off, and so do we. So uh, we will not have any presentation. So kill all your reminders for next Thursday, but uh, try to join us back here December 1st. We'll get into Beyond the Basics, We're going to do publishing and e-transmitting, which are really handy features. Uh, December 8th, the tips and tricks, guys, we'll go through, well, I should, I should uh, clarify this. Uh, the Mac version 2017 may, may not be out by just then, so we may have a replacement webinar for that Thursday. But as of right now, that's what we're shooting for, but that may be subject to change. So uh, keep your eyes out for that, and any reminders will be sent out before that happens. Uh, December 15th, the third dimension, covering environmental uh, exposure, IBL, and uh, presets within AutoCAD 2017. So that's specific to uh, full AutoCAD programs. Uh, of course, anybody running LT, we never want to discourage you from attending, but just note that most of the stuff in there, if not all, is going to be geared for the full releases of AutoCAD. Again, there are links in these slide decks. These are all posted, uh, and the links from, through your invites will have access to all these links here that you see on the screen. Uh, we'll have our data sets that we use, any scripts that we might have used, uh, and of course the recordings are on the YouTube channel. Um, my recommendation is to put them on one and a half speed because you get through them a lot quicker that way. All right, the Autodesk Knowledge Network always expanding. We're always adding to it. Uh, you can help us in this respect too through the community, um, the forums, the blogs, the idea station. Uh, it's all a way to further knowledge about AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. We're constantly writing articles as issues come into us, so it's an ever-growing resource. Uh, there's the links for downloads, hot fixes, service packs, what have you. Take advantage of those uh, because if your product isn't up to date, chances are uh, it's not going to be functioning as well as it could because there's a reason we put out updates and it's usually to fix something. So today, uh, this week, we are going to be going through the Design Center and Dave will be managing most of that presentation. We'll go through at the end and do a few things, little gotchas, little uh, trivial things to know about the Design Center, things we think you might want to know. So we'll go through the user interface, uh, managing content with the Design Center, creating tool palettes, one of the most powerful aspects of the Design Center, and a few other things as we have time. But before we get into any of that, as always, we have everybody's favorite. Uh, we have a few polls we need to throw out just to get them out of the way, and then we'll get into the content. So as we always do, uh, the first thing we want to know is whether or not this is your first Build Your IQ Autodesk webinar. Always helps us to know who our audience is and so we can tailor the content as we go along. Looks like a pretty goodly percentage are, have voted, so I won't let this go too much longer. 
sorry, I don't have the Jeopardy music with me like I did a few times back, but um, any comments about that will be happily accepted. All right, so let's close this one out and I'll uh, share the results with you there real quick. Looks like the majority are returning customers and uh, for those newcomers, welcome, glad you're here. Hope we can show you some things that maybe you didn't know before, maybe you can work into your workflows. So uh, the next one we want to roll out is to know which AutoCAD programs you're using out there. Again, uh, the, with most of these and, and all these polls, we're just seeking to mine information about who we're talking to. It really helps us to uh, tailor the content and um, you know the, the certain tracks you know, really speak to different experience levels. Of course, this is the back to basics, so there's probably not going to be anything earth shattering here as far as uh, tips and tricks, but uh, if you're relatively new to the program, maybe you've never even heard of Design Center, this should be helpful. All right, so let's close this one out. Quickly share the results with you there. Looks like the majority are AutoCAD LT and AutoCAD as, as per usual. Sometimes that fluctuates, but it just depends on who we have in during these sessions. And then lastly, before we get into the content with Dave here, we will uh, ask the question, have you ever used Design Center? Uh, yes, no, and I've never heard of that feature. Um, Again, it's it's a uh, I think it's an oft unused and underutilized part of the program and uh, forgotten in some cases. So um, you know we, there hasn't been a lot of development work on it in the past several years. But honestly, it it does what it does and it does it pretty well. So there hasn't been a whole lot of call for it to be expanded upon. So uh, when you see what it can do, I think you'll uh, note that it. Uh, maybe is cooler than you thought it was, or if you've never heard of it, which a few of you are saying you haven't, we will hopefully show you something new. So let's close that out, share the results real quick with you here. Um, again, there is a percentage of that never heard of Design Center, and that's really why we're here. I always like to reiterate that we're not a replacement for training, so please, if, you, if you're uh, ever unsure about the software, how to use it, how to utilize it in your workflow, there are myriad opportunities and resources out there for training, um, be it books or uh, community college courses or, or online videos or what have you. There's a lot of information just because the product is so mature at this point. There's almost nothing uh, new under the sun as far as uh, the basics at least. So avail yourself of anything you can find. Uh, get your hands on some training materials as uh, they're very useful. So we'll just quickly share out the results with this and then I will throw it over to Dave. Most of you have used Design Center, looks like at least half, uh, so that's good to see and uh, for those others, maybe we'll change that. So at this point, uh, I will... So can you see my screen okay, Zach? Uh, let me take a look. I'm trying to make you the presenter, but I don't... There we are. Yep, now I can. Okay. Sure can. All right. All right. Well, thanks, Take Zach. it away, Dave. All right. Um, so, uh, as Zach said, my name's Dave, and uh, I'm over in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, and happy to see a bunch of you uh, still attending here, even though we have uh, Autodesk University going on. I know uh, a lot of folks are probably at Autodesk University and uh, learning all kinds of great stuff about our new offerings and uh, in uh, you know socializing with all the other attendees there, but uh, great that to have you folks with us. Um, so um, the f first thing I want to do before I even get into Design Center, um, so D Design Center is going to be a, a a tool that allows you to kind of pull different things out of other drawings. Um, the way that you know most people are probably doing things today is uh, you know you have a um, a drawing and you are just you know coming over and selecting something from a drawing and doing a copy 
and then bring it into another drawing, doing a paste or something like that. And what you're going to see with Design Center is uh, Design Center is a, a much more efficient way to be able to get data from other drawings. Uh, it's also a great tool that uh, to do some stuff that you really can't do any other way. Um, you know, like uh, you know, copying layers from one drawing to another and things like that. Um, so the you know, uh, I guess the first thing is, you know, where is Design Center? And just like everything in AutoCAD, there's, you know, um, bunches of different ways to get to things. So you're going to, you can find Design Center in a number of places in the ribbon, uh, on the view, uh, ribbon over here in the palette section, there's the, uh, icon here for Design Center. So you can access it that way. You can get to it from the insert tab. There's a design center option over here. Or you could type in um, the command AD center or even just ADC if you want. It's a little shortcut to open up design center. But re regardless of how you do it, it'll open up uh, this design center window. And I'll get to this in just a second. Um, one thing that you, you know, that happens if you're using design center is just one more darn palette to get a new way, right? So right now I've got uh, you know the layer manager palette open. I've got my two palettes open. I've got my property palette. Uh, I've got my external references, and now I've just added a fifth one here uh, for design center. So um, I typically do the tips and tricks track, and uh, so I'm just too tempted to not go over at least this one tip here. Um, if you take any of these palettes and you right click on the edge here and you select allow docking and then you could select either anchor left or anchor right and it'll put it right on the, the side panel there and if you have the uh, little selection here for auto hide turned on as soon as you move your cursor off it'll collapse. So one of the things that I like to do is to basically anchor all of these different palettes to the side screen and it basically gets them out of the way sorry about that it's just a hello cough there um, so it gets them out of the way and then if you need one you just basically hover over whichever one you want and it'll open that up and uh, it doesn't take up all that real estate and it's always on in the same basic place there is there is one issue with AutoCAD and that uh, the order of these various palettes may change when you reopen AutoCAD. So it, you know, uh, properties is the third one down right now. If I close AutoCAD and open it back up, it may be the top one or something. Um, so that's, that is one little issue, but it's, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to see what's going on here. And if you really want to save some space, you can also just set this to icons and you just get icons here instead of, uh, instead of text. But I like the text. It's, it certainly makes it easier to identify what's what because those icons are pretty tiny. So um, this is a good way to just organize some of your palettes. And if you want, you can put some on the right, some on the left, whatever you want to do. Um, so in Design Center. So uh, I start off by looking at the user interface a little bit here. So basically, uh, it's you know pretty basic uh, dialog box. You know, you have a, a, a folder view over here on the left-hand side. Um, basically, just can navigate wherever you need to within your computer or your network environment. Um, there's a uh, tab here for whichever drawings are currently open, which is uh, kind of nice. So you can, um, if you have some kind of library file and you open it up, you can always get to things. And then there's also a history tab, which will show you like uh, I think it's up to 20 of your last uh, files that you've been working with so um, pretty basic type of user interface uh, I'll come over to I'll talk about this here in a, um, yeah I should talk about it right now real quick so um, over here in in your drawings when you when you first open up design center it's going to default by um, you know out of out of the box to your sample folders. So if you were to close this thing and, and open it up, I've already uh, closed it, it would browse automatically here to your sample folder and that's where you were gonna be. So uh, basically you can take this and uh, right now this is actually my home, home uh, folder. If I were to go somewhere else and I select on the little home button, it'll bring me right to these, fo these files uh, which is the default location. Um, once you're into these files, 
right? That you can come over and open, uh, take a look at any of these drawings. And you can see that um, Design Center will actually allow you to, to mine all these different types of, of objects and things um, from the drawing that you that you currently have highlighted. And then you can insert those into your current drawing and, and actually even do some other things. Um, if we look at the top section here, um, whoops, Sorry, I just went off my design center. If you look at the top section, yeah, it's pretty basic. You can open up a file, you can go back, go forward, uh, you can go up a level. Uh, I'll come back to this one here in a little bit later on, but uh, you can actually search for things. I'll show you how that works. Um, you can go to your favorites tab uh, or folder, and you can add any uh, drawing you want to your favorite. So if you're using something over and over again, you can just uh, select on a drawing here and add it to your favorites. And um, whenever I go to the favorites, that's that drawing. You know, there'll be a link to that drawing from the favorites panel. And then uh, if it, if we were somewhere else, so let's see, I just just select on something, whatever. Um, as I already showed you, you can just hit home, and it'll bring you right back to wherever you want as your default home panel or home uh, page here. Um, actually, and for for this webinar, I actually uh, want this to be somewhere else, so I actually copied uh, all of these drawings to a, a webinars folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that my home panel. So if I go somewhere else and I hit home now, it's going to bring me right to my drawings that I, I want to use for this particular webinar. Um, the, some of these other options here, um, there's a, you know, the ability to turn off the tree view. So you know, if you're always working in the same folder and you don't really need to see that, you could turn that off. It gives you a little bit more real estate. Right? Turn that back on. You could turn off the uh, preview. So if I select on this and select on a block or whatever, we have a preview area down uh, on the underneath the various uh, blocks that are showing up on the top. Gives you a nice big, uh, a much better view, and you can expand that to make it a little bit bigger, so you can see things a little easier here as you're working through the uh, various blocks. So uh, it's one of my suggestions is to kind of expand that up a little bit, and then there's also a description down here. And you can turn off the description if you don't care about the description. So that's just an option. And then, of course, we have large icons, small icons, which basically are so small that you can't really see anything. Uh, you can put this in a list view. So you just have a list of all the names or a details view. So um, just gives you a slightly different. The thing that works the best for me, I guess, is the, uh, the large icon view. Uh, but that's, uh, that shows you there. Okay. So let me uh, start by going through some of these various uh, components. Um, as I as I said, uh, you know, if we're just looking at blocks, actually, I'm going to use a different drawing. Uh, let's look at uh, Home Designer and look at the blocks. <clears throat> so the probably the one of the most common things to use, you know, for the um, for Design Center is, is mining blocks out of it, out of something. So if I were to take, you know, if I wanted this bathtub in my drawing, um, we can simply take this and I can just drag it and drop it right into my drawing file and it will insert that like that. Um, however, you notice that I didn't really get any prompts here, right? Um, it, it basically just inserted the block. However, if I double click on the block, that, that brings up my standard insert dialog box. So I could turn on things like, uh, you know, I want to specify the insertion point and the rotation angle. So when I get the, uh, the block here, I can, you know, rotate it, do whatever I want with it. So um, pretty, pretty simple stuff there. Uh, we can also actually get right. So one of the things that's really cool about Design Center is it, it is kind of a combination of lots of different uh, AutoCAD commands. So, you know, I just showed you how you can do an insert. Um, I can even re uh, redefine the block or uh, insert and redefine it or even get right into the block editor. So if I needed to change this, I can hit block editor. It'll go ahead and uh, open up the drawing for me and, uh, and start the block editor. So right now I can make any changes I want to this block. I'm not going to make any. I'm just going to go ahead and close it. But uh, you, know, you can get directly into um, the block editor from Design Center. Um, 
Some of the other things that we have here, um, you know, you can get detail views, dimension styles, uh, layers. So if, you know, if I get in, you know, if I look at some of these, I don't think this drawing has a whole lot. Um, just you know, layer zero, etc. But if I were to take, uh, let's say, this is my first floor. Oh, wall base. Here we go. If I look at wall base and I look at uh, layers, you can see that I've got a whole bunch of layers here in the drawing, um, and I can actually copy those into another file. Um, let me go back for one second. Uh, actually, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start basically populating a drawing. Like um, maybe maybe I, I get a drawing from an, from another customer or from a client, and I want to make sure I'm using like their title block and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I have a, a block a drawing with uh, title blocks in it here. If I go over to to uh, layouts, you see that I have an 11 by 17 layout, and right now in my drawing. All I have is layout one and layout two. So if I take this layout and I dress, come over and drag and drop it into my file, it just created this 11 by 17 layout with the title block that was in that other drawing file. So I didn't have to open it and XREF it in or whatever. I just uh, drag and dropped it, and it created the layout for me. Um, by the way, just another tip in case uh, you uh, you know, need to insert a layout from another in another way. If I right click on one of the layout tabs, and you can select from template, and you can basically uh, go over. Let's see, I yeah, just grab webinars. Uh, Back to the basics. Introduction to design. So here we go. Drawings. And I'm going to change this to DWG instead of a template. And I'll select my wall base drawing. And actually, uh, this only has layout one. But uh, you can actually insert a, a layout from another drawing just by picking on or right clicking on a layout tab and selecting from template, changing to a DWG, and then you can insert that from your other drawing file. I already have a layout one, so it's not going to work in this particular case. So I have uh, my 11 by 17 uh, template that I just brought in. But if I were to go to my home tab here and uh, look at my layers, I, all I have right now is layer one, miscellaneous, and title. Um, maybe I want to start populating that uh, drawing with some layers uh, from the uh, floor plan. So wall base and I'll go back to layers and I can just sit here and select all of these various layers. Oops, hit, uh, hit shift to be able to select them and now again I can just drag those into my drawing file and now you'll see that I have all of those layers populated in my drawing. So hopefully you're starting to see you know, some of the power of using Design Center. Uh, it's able to, to do a lot for you. Um, how, you can even, uh, if I go back to my model tab here, I'm going to go over and uh, let's close up some of this a little bit. Go to Drawings and go over here to Wall Base. Uh, you can uh, insert this as a block or I can attach this as an XREF. So if I wanted to attach this, it just brings up the attach um, you know, XREF dialog box. Go ahead and attach the drawing. And here's my drawing being XREFed into this file. So we've done insert. I've copied some layers. Um, I've just used the XREF command. We were able to access the block editor. Right? Um, we could do the same thing with, with some of these other options as well. Uh, there's a drawing here uh, called Textiles Line Types. So this drawing, again, this is in the sample um, folder inside of AutoCAD LT. Um, this drawing actually has all of the various textiles and line, line types that we ship with AutoCAD, or a lot of them anyway. So if I wanted to uh, start grabbing some, let's say you want uh, you know, monospace and uh, Swiss bold, and 
whatever, Swiss regular. You can just, again, take those, drop them in, and if I use the style command, I, I just uh, brought in those text styles. Uh, same thing with the line types, right? If I need some line types, just uh, select on line types here. Uh, here's all the various, uh, you know, a bunch of different line types that we could use. So I want a fence line, and I want a track and a zigzag, and a gas line. I'll just drag those in, and then I have those line types being brought in. Right? Let's see. So with, um, same thing with dimension styles, multi-leader section views, right? I don't, don't need to show all of these different things. Um, but it, that allows you to, to do an awful lot uh, with just the, uh, the sample tools here. Okay. So um, one of the cool things, I, I mentioned that um, there's a search button. So if I pick on search, you're going to see that, oh, there you go. Come on. Search. Why? Right, hold on. Let's see, let me get my design set back. Where'd you go? Looks like I just dragged it off the uh, off the end of the world here. So let's see if I can get this back. This is uh, what you call a Volker moment. <laughs> so if I go to uh, Palettes, Design Center, and I'm going to say show it. and floating, apply, there we go. So uh, that's another little tip for you, is uh, if you ever lose a dialog box, you know, if it goes off the screen, you could use the CUI editor to get it back. So if I go to search, um, you're gonna see that I can search for lots of different things. I could search for blocks, detail views, dimension styles, hatch patterns, whatever. So for, for example, uh, I'm not gonna search my entire C drive, because that would be little crazy but I can go in and open this up and I'm just gonna look in my webinars folder and I want to search for a block and I know that it has you know chair in the name so I'm just gonna do a chair star and do a search and it's gonna look through all of the various drawings and in, in my folders here and uh, find any block within any of those drawings that has chair in the name stretch this open a little bit. So uh, go ahead and hit stop because I found what I want. So now I have my chair and I can just go ahead and insert this in and here's my chair. So uh, if, you know if you have a title block or something and um, you know or a, a maybe a detail that you've used in the past and you know kind of what the name is but you don't remember where it is or where it's located just use that search option and you can find lots of different types of things and it'll just look through all of the different drawings for you so you don't have to open up 10 different drawings and and hope to find the drawing that you're looking for the block that you're looking for it'll do all the hard work for you um, obviously if you need to do a new search you just go ahead and hit new search it'll clear your results and then I could say okay I want to find a uh, you know a hatch pattern with a particular name or whatever it is um, and th this will do all of that for you so, um, so that's kind of you know just pulling things out of um, drawings. There's kind of maybe a, a better way to manage stuff like um, like content. So in this particular drawing, I've got you know what is this twenty different blocks, and uh, I can certainly just drag and drop from here. But another thing that Design Center allows you to do is I can actually pick on these blocks. And I can right click and I can say I want to create a tool palette from these blocks. So 
hit create tool palette. This is going to take just a moment. Okay, so it just created this new palette for me, and I can say uh, this is uh, whatever furniture. It's not really just furniture, but that's okay. Um, so it created a tool palette of all these different blocks for me. One of the nice things about a tool palette is I can do a lot more than uh, just insert it. So you notice when I did the uh, insert before, um, it just put it on whatever the current layer was. So inside my tool palette, let's see, do I have anything good? Yeah, these are all, I should really probably should rename this as the, let's rename this. That's more like plumbing fixtures. Okay, so I can right click on this and we can go to the properties of the tool. And inside of the tool palette, we can then start assigning additional things. So the most common one that people would probably use here is layer. I can say, you know what? I want this to be on the uh, you know, the sink layer. Well, actually, that's a, uh, um, a bathtub, so I'll put it on the shower layer. Um, so instead of just putting it at the standard, it's going to put it on showers, not to just the current. Uh, I'm not going to mess with color, line type, plot style, all that. But I, I will say that I want to be prompted for the rotation for it. I obviously don't want to explode it because you want to keep it as a block. And it was drawn to scale, so we want to insert it at a scale of 1. So now I'm going to hit OK. And let's see. Let's put a, put a nice uh, um, bathtub here in the middle of my, my conference room or whatever this is. So you can see that it's uh, actually being placed on the uh, plan shower layer. So it's uh, you know, gone on a layer that I wanted to, you know, prompted me for the rotation, um, et cetera. So uh, you can start building these, these pallets up. Uh, one of the, just um, I'll tell it to stay open here. Um, one of the nice things here with the pallets too is we can also do other things, like I can add separators inside of here. So, <clears throat> and then you could put this wherever you want. So I'm going to say I want maybe, um, yeah, that's actually not a bad spot. Um, add another separator. Oops. Add separator. I'm going to take this one and I'll put it down below my doors. Um, you can add text. So I can say you know, doors and actually start labeling things. Put things wherever you, don't, wherever you want. And uh, you know this is going to allow you to, to really um, get at the content you want a lot easier. Um, if I were to right click on the palette here, let's see, let me just drag this across for a second. Um, so this is uh, right now it's just mixed in with all my other palettes. If I hit uh, customize palettes, uh, I can actually start creating a new group. So right now I'm in the annotation and design group, right where I have annotation. Um, architectural, mechanical, etc. Uh, I'm going to create a new group, and I'm just going to call this, you know, custom, whatever. And I'm going to drag this up to the top so it's at a high level. And then I could take my plumbing fixtures and drag that over here on the left-hand side. Um, let me hit. Uh, let me create one more. Actually, let me just do it the. Uh, I'll create another real one. Go back into my design center. And that was uh, the house designer. I'm going to go into the space plan. This one has like you know, furniture and such. And I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to select all of these different blocks. I'm going to go ahead and create a tool palette. So I created my new tool palette. I'm going to rename this one, and this one will be furniture. Okay, I'm going to go back into my uh, customized palettes. I'm going to drag furniture over. Actually, before I do that, I want to come up to the top here. Okay, and then I hit close. So now, right now, I have this 
palette group with all these various different palettes on it. But if I just want to see the stuff that I had, I can just go to custom. And now I just have these two palettes that I just created. And of course, you know, you could again modify this however you want. Um, so this is great for, for me, but if you also need to uh, um, customize palettes again, uh, if you need to share this with somebody else, then you know, just come over here and I could uh, export this um, and it will go ahead and create an XPG file, which is a product group uh, with all of the, the symbols and such. You probably, if you're going to be sharing this uh, with other folks, um, you probably want to make sure that the, the drawing that you're using as your sample is on the network location, because this is looking for it on my local C drive right now, because I created it from my C drive. And you can actually, if I go to properties, you can see it actually has the path to where the source file was. <clears throat> so if you're going to be sharing this, you know, put it on a shared network drive so you can start copying these things from one place to the other. Okay. Um, did, I, did I miss anything, Zach, as far as just the basics here? That's pretty much it. That's that's the high points for sure. Absolutely. And and and, and I I'd, I'd like to say that I think one of the coolest things about it is that when you talked about how you know you might have done things without Design Center, it involves you know opening a file, selecting a block, copying it to the clipboard, going to your other drawing, pasting it into your other drawing, and this really makes that so much more quick and I don't know if elegance the right word, but um, it, it's just more efficient way of doing it for sure. Yeah, and and I certainly don't know of any other way of you know copying things like layers from one drawing to another without using Design Center or you know, other than copying geometry that happens to be on that layer. For sure, yeah, and same yeah. thing with uh, you know text styles and line types and all those things. Yeah, if you yeah. if you copy a dimension that has a particular dimension style, it's going to bring the dimension style with it. But you can bring just the dimension style into a drawing without necessarily bringing any existing objects, uh, any existing dimension objects that are that are using that style. So it's it's uh, head and shoulders above co copying and pasting for sure. Yeah, this is this is a great tool for setting up your drawing templates that you're going to be using, you know, within your projects and stuff. Um, it, you know, instead of just inserting a bunch of stuff and erasing it, you can just you know copy in what you need to. Absolutely. Right. If you wanted to throw it back to me, I'll, I'll go over a couple little things that I wanted to sure. touch on, and before we go into the Q and A here. Okay. All right, you are now the presenter. Fantastic. I'm going to show this screen and uh, let me know when you can see me. Yep, just popped up. All right, very good. So a couple of things to note here. Uh, with Windows 7 and the newer versions of Windows, we have some abilities that we didn't have previously back when the Design Center was originally uh, conceived and, and constructed within the program. And one of those things I want to show here is for example, the My Documents. Uh, if we go into My Documents here, um, uh, rather, let's see, let's look properties. Uh, I think I had it set. Oh, so. In my case, I've got my documents set to look at these two folders. And as you can see here, there are other buttons. So you could include multiple folders in what's called, air quotes, my documents. Um, but when you, and the typical you know, default location is C, users, your username, slash documents. That's always been the main place for your documents folder. But with this ability in Windows now to redirect your documents folder and sometimes you'll have your my documents folder stored in a network location and maybe your IT will set that up for you that way so that you're not storing things locally so you know just disaster preparedness more than anything there so what you need to remember though about that is if you go into the design center and uh, control 2 is a shortcut to bring it up um, you need to remember that you're going to be browsing through specific folders and on specific drive letters. So there aren't any shortcuts in here 
for my documents, for example. So you'd have to go to see, you know, you, 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 you know I had a, a customer just last week. They said, you know, hey, if I go to see users, my username, and I go into documents, I'm not seeing any drawings, you know, any drawing files. But if I, but if I pull up the my documents shortcut in Windows Explorer, I see all kinds of drawings. And that's when we drilled down and we found out that their their documents folder was indeed redirected. So in order to pull up those same files, you can still get to those same files with the Design Center. You just have to know specifically where they are. In this case, they thought they were C users username documents, but they happen to be in like a mapped Z drive uh, on a server somewhere. So you've got to know what the path is. And, uh, you know, a lot of times people don't don't even really have a concept of what a, a pathing looks like. You know, this directory slash this directory slash this directory. So that's just one of the, the gotchas I wanted to point out there that you may run into because I've certainly had people report here that they were using Design Center and found that they they couldn't find their files where where they thought they were, and it was just a you know just a matter of understanding specifically where the things were. Another thing that I wanted to briefly touch on is that you've got these three tabs in the Design Center. Now there used to be a fourth tab to the right of History it used to be DC Online for Design Center Online, and what that was was a uh, shortcut really just to an FTP site that housed thousands of DWG files full of blocks. And uh, it was pretty slick. It was really well organized, but um, that's only available at this point in the non-English versions of the program. So uh, you may see still, if you run the CAD Manager control tools, there'll be a checkbox for disabling or enabling the DC Online tab. And you might think, what is the DC Online tab? That's what it is. It used to be here. It's not now. So um, DC Online used to answer the ages old question, hey, I need some content. Uh, I need a chair. I need a desk. I need a, a table, what have you. And I don't want to draw it from scratch. Surely you guys have a, a library somewhere of these sorts of things. And it's true. We used to have a disk that you could get uh, called Symbols, and it had it was chock full of DWG files full of blocks, uh, but it's long since out of print. If you can find one, that's great. But um, with the demise of DC Online within the Design Center, we replaced it with Autodesk Seek. And what this is over here, up in the upper right-hand corner, uh, you don't necessarily have to go to it through Design Center, but you can. It's easy. Well, if you click on this, it will launch your browser, and it will take you to seek.autodesk.com. Of course, you can mark that as a favorite and just go in your browser to it independently of AutoCAD. But it's a, a nice little link from within Design Center. And with Seek, uh, the Seek website, what we did is we took all of the stuff that used to be on the DC Online FTP server and more, and we, we put it together in a much more user-friendly, searchable um, website. And so, for example, if we go into, say, interior and we want to look, we've got 493 chairs to, to choose from. So if we click on that, it'll bring us to a listing of just the chairs. And as you can see on the left there, there's a drill down and you can further uh, specify what you want. Um, maybe you want them for office, maybe you want systems furniture for a bunch of things, um, chairs, um, you know, you can you can sort by manufacturer, uh, all sorts of ways you can you can narrow things down. You can change your sort options here, uh, and next to each one, it's really cool. It tells you, and it's not just for AutoCAD, as you can see here. Um, it tells you what file formats are available for these particular things, and it'll give you a preview of what the thing looks like. Uh, some files are Revit files, some are DWGs for AutoCAD, some are DWIFs uh, you could view in Design Center, and uh, not Design Center, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, do it, uh, review, design review, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, and of course PDFs. Now with 2017 AutoCAD having the, the new ability to take PDFs that are attached 
and and extract out the geometry from them, turn them into editable geometry, all these PDFs that are up here available on the Seek website become that much more useful uh, because you can, and in, in most cases, you'll find a DWG too. But uh, if you just find one that doesn't happen to have an AutoCAD DWG, but it does have a PDF, you can just grab the PDF, import it into AutoCAD 2017 and going forward and newer versions, and um, turn that into editable geometry. So the Seek website, as you can see here, has lots of stuff uh, really well put together, really well laid out, it's easy to search through and narrow down and uh, grab some, some pre you know, pre-done content from manufacturers so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you need to build a table or, or put some chairs or, or, you know, if you're putting together a floor plan and you need uh, bathtubs and sinks and toilets and tables and whatnot, uh, they're here. So it's it's a, save you some time. So uh, take advantage of it. Check it out. Uh, go to the Seek website and look around. It's 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 cool just to browse around. And some of the files uh, are 2D. Some of them are uh, made to look like 2D, but they're 3D. But they're really 2D files. So uh, they come in all shapes and sizes and formats, as you can see here. And this is just oh, looking at chairs. I mean, there's yeah. there's lots of other stuff available. Yeah. So and of course you can. Uh just filter by DWG. So if you don't want to see the Revit files and stuff uh, exactly. over with the exactly. file types, you just set to DWG and you just can see those. Exactly. And yeah, like Dave said, that's uh, over here in your file type filter, you can narrow it down to if I just want to see you know uh, those objects for which there are DWGs available, I can I can just check that box and it'll only show me those items for which there's a DWG file available. And sorry for the, the slowness of my refresh here. I think our building's having some sort of a, a, yeah, a network difficulty today, but fortunately we're, we're able to get online and, and do this presentation all the same. So uh, Seek is a, is a great website, to, lots of resources there. Um, if you don't see something there, you know, you, you might learn about some manufacturer names here and you might visit their websites and they may have additional content downloadable from there as well. So it's a good jumping off point if you don't happen to find what you're looking for here. So at this point, I uh, would like to open it up for a little bit of Q&A. There were some questions that we saw previously in the, uh, in the, uh, the questions section. Uh, I think some of them got answered. Let's take a look real quick here. Uh, Looks like somebody's multitasking watching AU and the uh, webinar. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, AU is always such an exciting time. It turns our offices into ghost towns, but uh, it uh, fills up a conference room in, somewhere in, in Vegas, so it's a trade-off. Um, uh, let's take a look here. It looks like um, uh, there is a con uh, Mark pointed out that it would be nice if Design Center could search for text within certain drawings, or um, and that's absolutely true. It used to be an option with, and I, I haven't seen it with the newer versions of, of Windows, but I recall at least with XP, uh, there was a particular DLL file that got loaded with AutoCAD that made it so that you could search for uh, certain text content and words within drawing files, and it was really a powerful tool, but I think it may have been uh, uh, pushed aside because of the the performance hit. <laughs> because uh, being able to to look into the database of each drawing file in a particular folder or on your C drive, God forbid, um, it, it would take forever. So um, it was a it was a nice tool. It was powerful, but. I think the logistics of it really have made it so that it kind of got backburned a little bit. But uh, we, we probably will get to a point where we have something like that available. Um, but yeah, Design Center is not the tool for that. Uh, let's take a look here. Um, content. Um, you know, that's a hard thing to answer, Raul. Um, it, 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 it's the industry. It's hard to get a feel for it. I mean, just speaking for myself, I mean, Dave probably has a little bit different perspective, uh, but myself, not having come from industry, not having been a reseller, I'm a little less in touch with what the world at large is doing out there. Um, being in a, a support role here is a little bit, uh, you kind of have the blinders on, but um, 
you know, you hear a lot of people talk about everybody going to Revit or or no, AutoCAD is going to be uh, the, the main thing forever. It, it's hard to say what's going to happen going forward, but, um, you know, the development is, is always going on both of these products. Um, they're very important products for us, obviously. So it also it's depends a hard, on it's a hard question to answer. Yeah, it also depends on uh, what industry you're talking about. So uh, when it comes to the architectural industry specifically, yes, there are a lot of people moving to Revit. Um, it, you know, but there's still lots and lots of folks using AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture. Um, you know, there are lots of other industri industries as well. So, you know, civil engineering, you know, that, that's not Revit, that's something else, you know, civil 3D or map 3D or, um, you know, competitive software. Um, but uh, when it comes to just content, like, you know, if you're looking here in Seek, you're going to see that most of these files, when it comes to, you know, at least architectural files, are available in both formats because we have customers, many, many customers using both types of products. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's a good perspective. It's, it is difficult to, to predict the future, but um, we'll keep cranking it out. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's also an issue with, um, you know, legacy projects, right? If, if you have a project uh, from five years ago, you're not going to redraw the whole thing in Revit just because you need to make some additions. You're probably going to stick with AutoCAD if it was done in AutoCAD. So, sure, sure, and, and then we've got 25 years yeah. now, or 30 years, however many years AutoCAD's been going, of people making drawings and doing entire buildings in AutoCAD. So, so yeah, there's that whole legacy stockpile of DWG files out there that it's just, um, I can't imagine somebody, you know, redoing all of that as, as time goes on. I mean, eventually, maybe, but, um, yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Dave. Yeah, so Jill has a good question, and I, I think that the she wants to know if you can take a chair from Seek and put it right onto you know a tool palette. Um, I don't think you can do that. I think you'd have to download the chair, you know, put it into a drawing, and then you know drag it from your you know your content drawing to the tool palette. You can't go directly from Seek to the tool palette. Right. So let's let's take a look. Let's uh, take a look and see what we have for this first drawing here. This. Uh, I think there are two files available for this particular chair. Uh, I'm curious myself here what we can do with it. I know, you know, if you if you uh, you can use the design center once you have the file saved, and I think that's really the 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 Steek website doesn't necessarily interact directly with the program. You have to save the files to your hard drive. Um, in contrast to DC Online, which used to have an eyedropper, uh, you'd bring up the DC Online uh, content and you just drag it right from DC Online and Design Center into your drawing with the eyedropper. So there's one extra step added this way. Uh, let's take... Uh, well, you can see some of these are saved in pretty old drawing formats just mainly for compatibility purposes because there are still plenty of people out there using uh, former versions of the program. Uh, let's take a look. Can we... Uh, well, I apologize. I think my system's just around a little a little slow for, for going through uh, and doing anything really terribly interactive here. Let's see. Uh, yeah. uh, one way or the I other, though, the, 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 uh, the software, you know, the, the chair has to be saved to, to, you know, to some drawing on your system or your network before you put it on the tool palette because uh, the tool palette is not going to look to seek for the content. Right, right, absolutely. There's no, there's no connection between the site and, uh, and design center and your tool palettes. But um, one of the things, speaking of tool palettes, Dave showed how, how you can quickly take an entire drawing full of blocks and turn it into a palette. And, and that is a, a really powerful way to build your tool palettes. Um, I'm going to skip this for now on the screen. What uh, I had is somebody just last week and uh, they said that they were at multiple sites. They had users at multiple sites and they were trying to uh, figure out a way to synchronize their tool palette content. And we do have other articles and there have been whole AU classes on how to keep your tool palette synchronized, but a lot of those assume that you're all in the same place. You're all in the same building. Uh, you're all, you all have access to the same map network drive letters. Um, so this was a little bit different and they only had you know, they had a, a couple of pallets worth of blocks, 
And what we talked about was maybe utilizing and leveraging the power of Design Center to synchronize their stuff. Like, for example, they would use uh, A360 or, or, or Dropbox or any other cloud storage media to, to synchronize the, the, the current version of the DWG file that housed all the blocks they used for the tool palettes. So um, if they only had a couple of pallets, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it could really get out of hand quickly if you had a whole bunch of DWG files that you're constantly updating with blocks. But if you, if you just maintain a couple of blocks, uh, a couple of drawings, rather, full of blocks, uh, you, could, you could grab a copy of it every morning or however often, maybe once a week, and just uh, you know, go to Design Center, right-click it, say, make me a tool palette from this drawing, and you would get a, a fresh tool palette that had all the updated content that way. Uh, and, and, you know, I can see that really being useful with people at, at various different locations uh, around the country, around the globe, what have you. So, um, and there's no other way to, to that quickly build a palette. Um, you know, the synchronization of palettes, if you're all on the same network, yeah, we can do that. But, but for people that are all over the place uh, and needing to, to uh, collaborate, a design center really gives you an ability that, that just you can't barely get from any other part of the program. I think we've come up to the top of the hour. We want to run the last uh, poll, and I think we'll just uh, wrap it up here. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. So let's get back over to the polls section. Um, and as we always like to ask, the very last thing is, and what we hope is that you hope you learned something today uh, from the presentation maybe uh, learn about a feature that you'd never used before, maybe you had used it, maybe you didn't realize all the things you could do with it. Uh, and that's, that's really our, our main goal. So um, I'll go ahead and close this. A uh, little over half of you, looks like you voted. But at this first time, we've got 100% uh, saying yes. So that's fantastic. Quick results there. Um, that's that's the best we can hope for, and uh, uh, keep the feedback coming in. We love to to get any feedback you have for us, be it good, bad, indifferent. It helps us uh, tailor the future webinars for for what you want to find out, what you want to learn about. And as always, uh, within the slide decks that we will have available at the, the links from your invites there, um, some specific things for Design Center, uh, CAD Manager Control Utility, we touched on that a little bit, um, and then <coughs> importing and exporting tool palettes. And that's more of the traditional how to do that rather than using Design Center. So as I said, if you've got any sort of feedback, uh, what you might want to see in the future, here are some links here in the slide deck that will be available after the webinar. Looks like at this point, I think we covered all the questions that were yep. that were outstanding. So yeah, as always, you. we'd like to thank you for attending. Dave, did you have any parting words? No, just uh, again, I was going to thank everybody for taking some time out of their day. And uh, I'm glad that we're able to show something and teach something new for you folks. And hope to see you all back in a future webinar. All right. Well, from all of us here at Autodesk, thank you very much, and we will see you next time.